Welcome to Watercolor by Scarlet Demon. If you thought my last tutorial was quick or some of the tutorials I've been putting out are pretty quick, this one will be even quicker. Today we are talking about wax and wax resist, a technique called wax resist. It is extremely simple. The things to know is the wax will not come off your paper. So once you put it down, it's stuck. And I recommend doing a lot of practicing, trying it out, see what you like before you tackle a watercolor page that's of any significant value. So I'm going to use this page. This was part of our sponge. These are all, all marks done by sponges. And down here I've used a few to make a little uh, a little picture of kind of like a forest or underneath the, the flowers. And I want to just come in here and, I don't know, let's, what should we do? Here, I think I'm going to make a square. If you use beeswax, it's going to show. So while beeswax is wonderful for the environment, for the bees, um, and everything else, it's not so great on your watercolor. You can also use tiny little candles. This one is also a candle. This is a Christmas candle from Germany. They're very short. And this is a, a birthday candle. This is a piece of white oil pastel. Now, this will work differently, but it will have a very similar effect. So I've gone ahead here. I've just drawn in a square on that one. And because it's white, you can't really see where it is. So you have to be careful. You also have to be careful of these little flickety pieces at the end because you don't want them to smear into something else. Okay, so we've got a few bits here. Let's come back with our brush and let's see. So if you're into crafting, um, or maybe you were doing a full scene of a tree and there's lots of little bits of highlights, uh, in the leaves and lots of light bits and instead of using your the other options like masking fluid or permanent masking or something you want to come in and maybe toss in a whole bunch of random little marks that will represent all the highlights in the tree come down here Okay, so that would work too. Now that's about as good as it's gonna get. So the wax is actually pushing the paint off. It's sealing in the paper and just moving the paint right out of the way. So if you don't have access to masking fluid or you don't have paper that's, that's strong enough to deal with masking fluid and you wanna have a similar technique on a budget, this would be a definite way to do it. Now another thing, you can see how it's, it's not complete. It's not a solid complete like masking fluid. It's really just going on the top, on the, the upper tooth of the paper. It's sitting on the top. Um, you'd really have to work it in. Really have to work it in in order to get a complete cover. And if you're gonna do that and you wanna make sure that it's completely covered and you don't have any stray pieces, um, I would use masking fluid. Uh, sorry, I would use masking tape or something similar to mark off your spot so that you're not making random marks, but instead you can keep your mark very precise. So here, yeah, even here, I was able to get it a little better. If I remove some of these dots, it's, it's better, but it's not, not perfect. The crayons are an option, um, candles is an option, and so is wax pastel. These things will all work to give you this lovely, uh, this lovely effect. And if you're into crafting or making cards, this can be really, really cool. Definitely. I can think of many things that I would like to do with this. Please visit me over on my school and let me know how you did. You can post your work there. Let me see what you've done. Follow along with our class assignments. Join the conversation and get more in-depth uh, knowledge and information and on all of my classes and lessons and such. Thanks for watching. I'm Scarlett and I will see you in tomorrow's tutorial. Toodaloo!